Mr. Halfwing here, and here's a short video on electromagnetic induction. So um, here's Faraday's ring right here. So you uh, turn on the electric current, the current's going to come around like this, and come around, and around, and around. That's going to cause a magnetic force field. The change in magnetic force field, we call that magnetic flux, uh, causes, induces current in the other solenoid or coil, and that induced current will prov uh, produce the opposite magnetic field. And that current will uh, cause a voltage or a measurement of current as well. Uh, and if you keep that going on, off, on, off, on, off, you can keep causing that uh, induced current to occur. So, electromagnetic induction, according to Wikipedia, here's the definitions. I just copy and pasted this over. Faraday's law of induction is the basic law of electromagnetism, predicting how a magnetic field will interact with an electric circuit to produce an electromotive force, EMF. Phenomenon known as electromagnetic induction. It is the fundamental operating principle for transformers, inductors, and many types of electric motors, generators, and solenoids. We're going to focus mostly on generators here. So uh, here's what a generator might look like. So here we have a wind turbine right here. Uh, the windmill. The windmill is going to turn uh, this way. That's going to cause this coil right here to turn inside the magnetic field. So since it's turning, the magnetic force lines will be cutting the coil differently every split second. So we're inducing, that will induce a current. And once the current is induced, this commutator here is um, brushing up against the, uh, the metal brushes here, and that's going to cause, allow the current to flow through the circuit to the light bulb. Uh, another way you can do show is like this. If you uh, push a magnet through a coil, you'll see a light bulb light up. It's a very simple situation. And then a big turbine might look something like this. you got a bunch of coils uh, passing by magnets. They don't have to go through them, just pass near them. And that will cause uh, magnetic flux on each coil, and that will cause a current to be generated. Okay, so here's Faraday's law and Lenz's law. Okay, so um, according to uh, Faraday, you can induce a current using magnetic flux. And then Lenz determined that when you do that, the uh, coil will produce the opposite magnetic force field. So uh, if you have a north coming towards the coil, then the coil will have a north right here. Uh, and then when the south is coming in, you'll have a south. This is really useful for uh, regenerative braking in electric cars. If you can have magnets pass by coils, it'll slow your car down, it'll break the car. And at the same time, you can charge up the battery or a capacitor so that you're not completely losing all that energy. So it's uh, much more efficient that way. So here's a couple of animations, right? So you can take a look at the difference between a turbine and a, and a generator. Okay, so here we go. So here's uh, how a generator works. So here we have the, the wind. It's turning the circuit. It's lighting up the light bulb. Well, motors are the opposite. You've got a battery or a source turns the um, turns the, um, the the coil, and then you could hook up um, like a wheel or or a fan blade over here to make to make fan uh, make the air move or to turn the car the car wheel. So so it's kind of the opposite of each other, but basically uh, using the same materials. Right? Pretty cool. So here we go. Once more. You uh, attach a fan blade, wind blows, turns the, uh, the coil inside the magnetic force field. Okay, there we go. And that lights up the light bulb. Over here, you attach the battery, turns the, the uh, that'll start turning the coil in the magnetic field, and you can attach something to that. So there you go. All right, so uh, this explains it in the picture a little bit differently. So you got a chemical reaction causing an electrical potential, which causes mechanical. Over here, you've got um, light or wind, uh, sorry, mechanical, turns turning into electrical, and then turning into light over here. So uh, the history of this, in um, April 21st, 1820, Hans Christian Horstrid accidentally discovered the compass was affected by um, the electric current in the uh, experiment he was working with, and he discovered electromagnetism. Uh, electromagnetic induction was discovered by Faraday in 1831 and Joseph Henry in 32, separately, independently. And then Lenz's Law was formed in 1834. And today, thanks to that, we have lots of amazing technology that we would not have without uh, having had this discovery. So 
Once again, to induce a current, you just push a magnet through or by a current, uh, sorry, by a, by a coil. And because of that, we've got things like generators and transformers for our electrical grids, so we can have electrified cities and, and homes. Um, and then that allows us to have motors for fans, cars, pumps, air conditioners, all these amazing things. Solid state physics allows us to have, which uh, is electromagnetism, allows us to have computers, mobile devices, Wi-Fi, and the internet. And of course, we can use um, the same technology for MRI, medical machines, diagnostics. So it's really, really changed the world. So now we don't have to, uh, you know, go to the well and draw it out by hand with a bucket. We can just pump it into our homes. It's just absolutely amazing. So I hope this video helped with your understanding of electromagnetic induction.